Hello everyone, my name is Alexis, and today I'm going to be talking about sidewalk quality, sidewalk repairs, and how we might pay for those repairs. So probably many of you have seen sidewalks that maybe look something like this. There are slab displacements, large cracks, holes, um, places where the sidewalk may be crumbling, um, places where even the sidewalk may not even exist, they're just a place of dirt. Um, and also in some places where there isn't a curb ramp for people, let's say, in a wheelchair to get from the street onto the sidewalk. So this is probably a very common problem. So we want to figure out how do we pay for these repairs. So our study was done in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and the sidewalk ordinance there requires adjacent property owners or homeowners to pay for sidewalk repairs in front of their property. Now, as you can probably imagine, this is difficult to enforce. People probably don't want to spend their money on paying for sidewalk repairs. It's probably not the top of their list. Um, but it's also a concern, it's also difficult for lower income households. Um, because you know, they probably don't have the money to pay for those types of repairs. Their money is probably going to something um, other than that, probably you know, housing, food, etc. But also, lower income households are more likely to use sidewalks. They're more likely, more likely to use them to get to a bus stop, get to work, get to a store, get to school. So. We want to make sure that you know. We want to make sure that paying for these repairs is not only fair to everyone, but um, we want to make sure that this is taken care of because these lower-income households are using sidewalks the most, probably. And so the main question that we want to ask is: How do we spread the burden of repair costs evenly among different levels of income? And how do different alternatives of funding affect different levels of income? So we want to look at how do we pay different types of different ways of how we pay for these repairs. <coughs> and this is not just a problem in Albuquerque, New Mexico. As you can see, Albuquerque is labeled in the red. Um, this is in cities all across the country. Um, you can see cities like San Francisco, LA, Boston, even here in New Orleans, um, adjacent property owners are responsible for paying these repairs. So it's a problem that's countrywide, and um, it's something that should be looked into. And you may be wondering, how did this come about? How did this ordinance, how, how did this law requiring adjacent property owners requiring homeowners to pay for these repairs, how did it start? Because sidewalks are public space, right? So we try to find out how did this, where did this begin? And so we found some research, um, uh, one study in LA that stated that when sidewalks were built uh, in the late 1800s, um, that when the, the property owners, they saw sidewalks as a way of increasing their property value. So by maintaining them, keeping them up, it was a way for them to increase their property value. In other cities such as Boston, New York, there were laws that required homeowners to remove any debris and remove any snow that was in front of their homes on the sidewalks. So we think that possibly this law of going from you know, requiring homeowners to requiring them to have full responsibility of repairs, we think this it sort of stemmed from these from these laws. And so for this study, we randomly selected 50 neighborhoods out of 250 neighborhoods total in Albuquerque. This is a map of the neighborhoods that we had surveyed in Albuquerque. In each, in each of those neighborhoods, we went to five intersections that were randomly selected, 
and we walked 200 feet, 200 feet in each direction, and we surveyed the sidewalks based on ADA standards. So if there were any cracks, holes, um, anything that would hinder someone with a disability or in a wheelchair from easily accessing or easily um, going about on a sidewalk. And so we were able to determine defect rates for each of those neighborhoods. And we were able to do a spatial correlation Moran's eye test to determine if the, these neighborhoods with defect rates, if, they, if the ones closer together um, were related and correlated. And we did find that they were. So we were able to estimate defect rates for the entire city, of all the neighborhoods in the city. And then we looked at how might we pay for these repairs. So we looked at a baseline policy, which is the current policy now, which is just requiring adjacent property owners to pay for those repairs. And then we also looked at different taxes of how we might um, incorporate the, the repairs. So we looked at the gross receipts tax, which in New Mexico is basically just like a sales tax. Um, and we looked at property tax and gas tax. Um, we got information about the gross receipts tax and property tax from con the consumer expenditure survey, which just tells us um, buying habits and um, of consumers. And then we got gas tax information from the household travel survey, which tells us how many trips, how many miles a household travels. So we wanted to look at how much would we need to increase these taxes in order to cover the cost of repairs compared to the baseline policy. So the, this shows the defect rates in household income. So on the left-hand image, this shows the average defect rate over the city. So in the red, that is higher defect rates. In the green, those are lower defect rates. On the image on the right, that shows average household income. So in the orange and lower right hand corner, you can see the income is lower. In the upper right hand corner where it's green, that is a higher income. So you can see that with higher defect rates and lower incomes, those are correlated. And again, this shows that, this is a graph showing average defect rates compared to income. So you can see that average defect rates are higher for lower incomes and lower for higher incomes. Sorry. You want a laser pointer, sorry. Oh. And so this shows the average annual tax paid per household. So this shows what a typical cost might look like. So you can, and we looked at if we spread the cost over five years or over 20 years to see what those differences might be like. So in the blue, blue line, you can see that the baseline, the baseline policy of just adjacent property owners paying for those repairs, that's pretty even, that's pretty, that's pretty even among all income levels. And the property tax is the lowest overall. And so this shows that the burden of just the baseline policy, that's not very evenly distributed. Because, you know, um, let's say in the five years, the average cost for a baseline policy is around $75. So if that's taken out of uh, someone of lower income, that's a higher share of their income compared to someone making much more money and paying only $75. So we want to make sure that we want to evenly distribute um, the costs of repairs. And so this is a graph showing percent shares of incomes for these different um, circumstances. So you can see that the baseline policy um, has the highest percent share for lower income neighborhoods or lower income households and the property tax in the red has the lowest overall cost. This is again over uh, the same graph, just 
the cost spread over 20 years. And these are maps showing, sort of showing how those results compare. So you can see that in the baseline policy and the gross receipts tax, the their, their, the costs or the shares of income uh, are not very evenly distributed as compared to the property tax and the gas tax. Um, you can see that in the lower left-hand corner of the baseline policy, um, there's higher shares of income for those, those neighborhoods that have lower income and higher defect rates. And the same goes for over 20 years as well. Both the property tax and maybe the gas tax have a more evenly distribution of repair costs. So in conclusion, um, what we found was higher defect rates in lower income neighborhoods. We found that the baseline policy of just homeowners paying for those repairs out of their pocket was most regressive, meaning that those of higher higher incomes aren't paying as much of their share as, as lower incomes. We found that the property tax is the least regressive and has the lower lowest overall cost. And we also found that, of course, the annual cost is lower over 20 years. So looking at the next phase, we want to see, we want to compare the costs, see if they correlate with any minority populations or neighborhoods with um, higher minority populations or communities. We also want to look at walking dependency. If different neighborhoods have a higher percentage of people walking and see if that correlates with higher costs or higher defect rates. We also want to look at if we did improve sidewalks, would that influence more people, would that influence people to walk more and take more walking trips? And any questions? 